morning students today we will start chromatography before explaining this chromatography first of all we should discuss this absorption and adsorption which is the important term you should know before learning chromatography absorption when we are taking it takes place throughout the substance for example if you are taking sponge and it is soaked in the water at that time the water will be absorbed throughout the sponge so that is the best example for this absorption when we are taking this adsorption when we are taking chalk paste it is soaked in water at that time this water it is getting adsorbed only at the surface so adsorption takes place only at the surface whereas absorption takes place throughout the bulk of another substance keeping this in your mind now let us see this chromatographic technique chromatography it is a separation technique which takes place based on its solubility difference in the same solvent for example we are taking black ink this black ink actually it contains three dyes now this black ink is kept in this paper then it is soaked in the solvent already what i said black ink contains three dyes all the three dyes it is there in the black ink only now it is soaked in the same solvent after that after some time based on its solubility we said three dyes all the three dyes will not have the same solubility after soaked in that particular solvent it starts to raise and it is separated like this so we can separate the three types of dyes by using this paper chromatography technique is it clear students now after that we will start solutions solutions when we are saying already we saw what is mixture homogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture means what i said uniform composition so homogeneous mixture of two or more substances we are saying it as solution solution means solute and solvent suppose when we are preparing salt solution what are the components needed salt water so that will get solution that salt is taken as solute the solute in the sense less amount the solution which contains less amount of solute always solute will be in lesser amount and solvent will be high okay so after that now we are going to discuss in detail about the types of solution based on the particle size the solution is classified into three types true solution colloidal solution and suspension when we are taking true solution for example i said salt water no in that salt water after you are mixing salt with water is it possible for you to separate that salt again no because it is completely dissolved so the size of the particle is less whereas when we are taking starch starch powder we are using it no revive like that so such kind of starch particles if it is soaked in water we are not able to see that but by using microscope we can see this kind of particles when we are taking sand and water sand it is immersed in water you are able to separate so size of the particle is less in true solution here you are not able to see but it can be viewed under microscope suspension when we are saying size of the particles are visible is it clear students now for you true solution generally it is called as solution that it is given in detail in 10th standard only colloidal solution alone it is discussed in detail in this topic 
colloidal solution it is heterogeneous in nature already in true solution we said no solute and solvent gives solution likewise dispersed phase and dispersion medium forms true solution in this true solution we are having two main concepts which is brownian movement and tindall effect when we are saying about this brownian movement it is the movement which takes place due to the unbalanced bombardment of this dispersed phase by the molecules of dispersion medium suppose when you are going somebody is pushing you will you go in the perfect manner automatically what you will do you will go in a random manner likewise due to unbalanced bombardment of dispersed phase that is colloidal particles by the molecules of dispersion medium water so only this random motion takes place unbalanced bombardment of colloidal particles by the molecules of dispersion medium is called as brownian movement is it clear students now next important property is tindall effect when we are saying about the tindall effect a beam of light is allowed to pass through this colloidal solution so when a beam of light is allowed to pass through this colloidal solution that path of the beam becomes visible you are able to see the path of the light so this property we are saying it as tindall effect this tindall effect property only we are using it in cinema hall projector due to the scattering of light by the colloidal particles generally tindall effect what we are saying in the sense the scattering of light by the colloidal particles is called as tindall effect it takes place in the cinema hall as well as even when you open the window also sunlight enters through the room no that also based on this effect only after that classification of colloids and the differences they gave it in tabular column that i will send you as image with explanation so that it is easy for you this emulsions emulsions plays a key role one of the colloidal solution is emulsion this emulsion is having two types one is oil in water emulsion and another one is water in oil emulsion water in oil emulsion means water is the dispersed phase and oil is the dispersion medium same manner in oil in water emulsion oil is the dispersed phase and water is the dispersion medium this emulsion alone two liquids mixed and it forms different types of emulsion this emulsion alone it plays a key role in food processing pharmaceuticals and metallurgy so with this this entire lesson is getting over be ready with all covered topics whatever topics are covered whatever doubts you are having you can ask in detail in google meet is it clear students before that also if you are having any doubts you can send it through message itself i will clear all your doubts thank you students